So when did you know that football was it for David Patton? Man, since I came out the womb. Man, for as long as as long as as I know, man, since uh, from the time I started started crawling. Now back to your early playing days. What was your mindset after coming out of West Carolina in '96 and going undrafted and then playing for the the, Ar the Albany Firebirds? Well, I, I think it was I think it was a mix between uh, a chip being on my shoulder and excitement, as well as disappointment, feeling frustrated because from my junior year uh, I had a pretty a pretty successful junior season and, and some of the NFL scouts, you know, were telling me that they felt like I would have a good chance to be drafted in late rounds if nothing else, bought in as a free agent. But at the conclusion of my senior year, I didn't even get a tryout. Uh, no scouts came in to check me out, not even to uh, evaluate me. So that was kind of discouraging, disappointing at the same time. But it, but also, you know, when you deal with adversity, one or two things are going to happen. You're going to go hard or you're going to quit. And uh, I just took it personal and I felt like no matter what level I played at, I was going to prove to them uh, that I was good enough and I was capable of playing in the NFL. So when it was when, when the opportunity presented itself for me to play arena football, I was absolutely excited about it. You got picked up by the Giants in 97. Was that just more like the next step or was it a major sigh of relief that you finally gotten that first NFL contract? Well, I was still grinding at that point uh, because what had happened was I actually got a tryout for the, the Edmonton Eskimos in the Canadian Football League. And uh, I made it throughout training camp, made the squad, but just before the first regular season game, uh, they, there was some type of financial issues and they didn't, they, it was some kind of way where they, they weren't going to be able to keep uh, as many American players as they desired. Because I think back during that time, you could only keep like seven to ten American players and we were like right on that bubble and I, being that I was the, 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 the youngster, you know, I kind of, you know, I kind of got the act. So that's what gave me the opportunity to play the last three games for the Arena League. And so when that season was over and I was preparing for the start of 97, I had to go back home and work in a, a coffee bean factory for eight months, loading 18 wheeler trucks with 300, pound, 300 bags of 75 pound coffee bean bags. And during that off season, someone told me about the pro timing date at the University of South Carolina, where, where Deuce Staley was the starting running back and Marcus Robinson was the big time receiver at that time. Well, they had, they had about, I'm gonna say 18 to 20 scouts to come uh, evaluate them and work them out. And I went out there and worked out with them and I ended up running a 427. Now the significant the significance of this is I had never broken, I had never run faster than maybe a high 44. So I was a 45 flat guy. And here I am, cut from the Canadian Football League. Uh, had played the three games of arena ball, but was working in a working for eight months in a carpet bean factory. And I go to this tryout and I run a 427. So now I have I have the attention of just about every scout that is there. They've got me right behind Marcus Robinson. I'm catching every ball. I'm running sharp. Chris Routes. Of all the scouts that was there, uh, Steve Bertarosa, I'll never forget his name. He was the, I think he was one of the head scouts for the New York Giants. He called me that next Saturday morning. Said, hey, listen, you had a great workout. Uh, I went back and talked to the guys. We want to bring you up to see if we want to offer you a, a, a contract. So that's how I ended up with the New York Giants. I prepared to go up there to work out. And upon getting there, man, they went ahead and signed me to a, a rookie free agent deal. And the rest is history, man. Uh, I had to I had to grind, scratch, and fight. So when I got to the Giants, I felt like I was drafted because I, I knew the journey. I knew all the setbacks and the disappointments. You know, being all Southern Conference and then not even getting an evaluation and then going to the Canadian Football League, feeling like, well, I'm going to prove to them that I'm good enough to play at the next level. But then getting cut from the Canadian team and feeling like, wow, if I can't cut it with the Canadian League, 
how in the world am I going to play in the NFL? But something within me just wouldn't let me quit. And I came back and played, uh, uh, worked in the carpet being factory. So when I got the, uh, the call from, from New York, man, I just took it as a, a new leap on life and, and went, went all out. And uh, the rest is history, bro. Then in 2001, so when you signed on with our beloved Patriots, what was your impression when you, got to, when you walked into New England? Two weeks in the training camp, they, they told me that I, I would have a shot to, um, to um, fight for the starting job opposite Terry Glee. But when I get there, they signed uh, Bernie Manuel, Torrance Small, and Charles Johnson. Now, all of these guys, and we already had Troy Brown, all of these guys already had 10 plus years, over 5,000, 6,000 yards. And they're telling me I'm going to have a shot to um, fight for the starting job. And I got to compete with all of these guys. Two weeks in the camp, uh, Bill Belichick calls me out of the meeting and said, I'm thinking like, oh, because if you get called out of a meeting in training camp, that, that's not good. You thinking that you're going to get released. Well, he, he, he called me into the meeting and said, listen, I told you we're going to have a shot um, to fight for the starting job. We feel like you've earned it. And I just want to know what it's going to take to sign you to, a, to an extension. So I went from mm. signing a $50,000 50, signing bonus for one year to negotiating a three-year extension over the course of two weeks fighting against all of that competition. Myself, Troy Brown, uh, Bertie Manuel, Torrance, Torrance Small, and Charles Johnson. And Troy Brown and I ended up being the starter because that's back when Terry Glenn was, you know, going through some things. So, uh, mm -hmm. and man, that was that that was the beginning of history, man. Not, not who'd have thought that that would be the beginning of the establishment of the dynasty that they've become. So when I when I think about when I think about uh, just how how big the, the organization is, how how stable the organ, organization is, how successful they've been, just to just to be a part of the foundational uh, 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 stones, man, that's 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 amazingly a uh, 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 humble. What was the general feeling amongst the guys when Drew went down and Tom replaced him? Mm. can't answer what the general feeling was because you never know what's in another man's heart and mind. But all I can speak for is what my feelings were. And I'm telling you, this is absolutely nothing against Drew Bledsoe. Man, he's a phenomenal quarterback, had a great career. I have a, a, an immense amount of respect for him. But when I got to New England, Drew was the $100 million quarterback at the time. Mm -hmm. He was the he was the face of the of the organization, and Tom was the third team start quarter, starting quarterback, and I was the third team starting wide receiver. So guess what we had to do? We had to be the scout team for the number one D. And all I remember is we would give the number one defense fits. I mean, we 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 were we were instrumental in preparing them because man, we, we pretty much had our way. I mean we, we we earned our monies. And I remember I remember thinking from practice to practice, wow, if you didn't know that Drew was the hundred million dollar quarterback, you would you would think Tom was the starting quarterback and that Tom was the hundred million dollar quarterback because of the way that we had such great success against the number one defense. Well, we're, we're playing against the Jets. Tom's the backup quarterback. I've earned the starting receiving job. I'm in the huddle with, with Drew Bledsoe. So I go from being Tom's number one man to being on the starting squad with, with, with Drew. And when Drew gets knocked out of the game by, by, by Mo, Mo, Mo Lewis, I believe it was. Yeah, when he gets knocked out of the game, I remember seeing Tom trot onto the field. And I promise you, it was like it was in a movie, slow motion. And as I'm seeing him run to the huddle, all I could think about was, man, we finna get off. Because I saw how successful he was in practice against the number one defense. And not only that, the, the thing that gave me the greatest confidence that there would be no fall off, we would at least remain the same and be just as good. Man, Tom Brady has an innate leadership within him.